It's like the live countdown. Three, two, one. Here we go. It's Monday night. Welcome to our Fit and Fierce call. It's December 5th already. How is it already December 5th? I do not know. But we have two special guests here with us tonight. We have Miss Emily and Miss Shelly, and they went to an incredible event this weekend. Um, they were at the GoPro event in Las Vegas, which I am completely jealous that they were there. I originally had tickets and um, couldn't travel, so um, had. I, I mean, we're just so lucky to have people on our team that have gone to this event and are willing to share their hearts and willing to share their aha moments, and I can't wait to hear from them. So I just want to do a quick little introduction um, so you know who you're listening to tonight. Uh, Emily is one coach away from one star qualifying, which is totally incredible. I'm super excited for that. Um, even more pumped for her for being a, su a success club all-star. That's an incredible feat in itself. Um, she's married. She has two cats. She has one really close to her right now. We might get a sneak peek. <laughs> so cute. Um, and a flock of chickens. I don't know if you've seen Emily's chicken videos yet, but if you want a good laugh, lighthearted, and you know, just to pick me up, definitely stop by her page. Um, she's an introvert, totally loves reading, but get her in her community and her tribe, and she's a total extrovert, so we love her for that. Um, and then she also teaches at a local community college, so she has a pretty full plate, but is making Beachbody a priority, and I'm super glad you're about to share it for us. Um, Megan, do you want to do Shelly's, or do you want me to do Shelly's? Sure. Okay. And then this is Shelly, your big fail on Facebook. Are you a McDonald, or did you have... I like still, I know it's been, I've been married for like six years. I haven't changed my name yet. Okay. She's still a McPhail. <laughs> and you can tell by her so cute accent. She's from Scotland. I can't remember where. The but West Coast. Where? Can you hear me? The West Coast? Yeah, the you're. West Coast. Scotland's tiny. You're cutting in and out just a little bit. But anyway, um, so. I met Shelly in Washington. We live down the street from each other. She has two beautiful little girls, and she is fitness mama extraordinaire. If you guys get a chance, you should you should really check out her like page. Um, she, her content is great. She does great videos and um, just really engaging posts. Um, and your Emerald Coach, you started last. I was at, you were one of those people I was afraid to invite to the opportunity because like, you know, she just had it all together and I was like, Oh, I, don't, I wonder if she'll join my team. And I never really asked. And then I just kept being consistent on Facebook and she finally came around and I was like, yes, <laughs> but, um, they're really good friends of ours. And unfortunately we've moved apart, but, um, I think I could go on and on, but I'm excited to hear what you have to say. I know we talked about this when you came to visit this summer. Yeah, yeah that you were going and yeah. yeah, I'm excited to hear about it. So who starts? <laughs> Shelly, you I can start. You okay. Want to okay, I'm going to mute. I'm really quiet because I can play this. I'm going to look like a person. I can put my headset on. Okay. You might find it better. Okay. Can you hear me? Better? It's <laughs> okay. I sorry. I can. I. I'm. I'm not used to this. Um. I'm gonna turn it down a tiny bit. Okay. Okay, so thank you, first of all, for having me in the call. It was, um, it's, a, it's a totally amazing to be on here. And I know I haven't talked to many of you before. I, we've kind of all interacted on the Facebook group. Um, but yeah, I am. I have two little girls. And before I met Megan, actually, and I still, I, I, I'm a massive cardio person. I do lots of running, triathlons, um, did an Ironman a few years ago. And then one weekend, Megan and I went to this lake house and we all had our kids with us. 
and Megan was there and she came out in her bikini and I was like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Because you have two little kids and you look absolutely amazing. And I'm like running and cycling and swimming and I was like, I just don't look like that. So I was like, whatever you're doing, I am totally up for trying it. So she introduced me to Insanity and then yeah, the coaching opportunity kind of came along after that, but I'm so incredibly happy that it's all happened and I'm here and I'm where I am because I'm part of this team because it's truly amazing. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I, I, um, I'm married as well and we live in Connecticut now. Um, I have some notes because we just got back from the conference last night and it was, honestly, it was so amazing. And Emily will tell you the same, like so many emotions, everyone was laughing and crying and dancing and everything. We saw Tony Robbins, he actually like stood beside me and I almost died because he was like so close, he was so massive <laughs> and <laughs> it was so amazing. And we saw Richard Branson, who's, he isn't such a stage person, but he, I mean, his story was amazing. He came straight from the Mojave Desert from that morning where he'd been working on his galaxy project where he's basically trying to send people to space and he was like oh I just came from my you know my rocket <laughs> and it's just it was just amazing to hear from these people who are not only incredible leaders but who've used their businesses to also give back to society so they're incredibly um, philanthropic and which is a big thing that I really want to be able to do in the future like I want to give back to communities and um tony robbins it was amazing we ended up raising over um i don't know what the final figure was five hundred thousand, i think in half a day for his charity for feeding the homeless so that was just just see what's possible if you just keep working um okay so i have my notes i'm gonna i there's five things i wanted to cover there's actually like a hundred things but I try to narrow it down to five because um, these are some of the things that for me that were really important in terms of what I can actually do to move my business forward and things that are quite practical. Um, and these are the million dollar mindset. That's the first one. Um, the five for three, two, one approach, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, mastering the skills of life and understanding fulfillment, which is the big deal uh, the importance of strategy and really having a game plan um, I know we said it before if you don't plan you're setting yourself up for failure and this just kind of gives you some steps to walk through for defining your game plan and then how to get say outside of your head so I'll try and be like 15 minutes or so and then if I'm longer then just stop me mm -hmm. you can skip a topic um, so the first one is the million dollar mindset and I th most of you have probably read Eric Worre's um, book on GoPro recruiting mastery um, so he talks a lot about the million dollar mindset and how, how you get this and one of the things he was talking about was like stop thinking like an employee because many of us are employees we work um, we're teachers we're corporate we were in the corporate world, we were, we were vets, we were, we were everything, and started thinking like an entrepreneur. So he was saying employees crave structure and, and entrepreneurs create structure because we don't have an eight to five job, but you still have to create some kind of structure because if you don't have a structure and you don't have those daily habits, then you're not going to you're not going to basically create success for your business. So it's really important that you create your own structure for yourself and for your team as well. And you just really um, push that down to your downline as well. And then employees create support and entrepreneurs create support. And we are so lucky to be in this team because we have so much support in the Fit and Fierce page and from Megan and Carrie, from all of our peers, from upline, downline, cross, sidelines, everyone. And we have to try and make sure that we keep doing that within our, um, our teams as well and just giving, having a support structure and so people know where to go if they, if they need some kind of assistance. And then they were talking about how employees are really risk averse and how they wouldn't really typically go beyond two weeks without pay. Um, they'd be just like shouting out and calling their union and everything else. And he was saying that entrepreneurs are often, I think we all know this, um, we're underpaid for a significant amount of time and then we're fairly paid for an average amount of time 
and then we're overpaid for a significant amount of time. <laughs> so they say that it's not, we know that this is not a real quick one business, but if you think about it compared to like corporate, my, my day job at Accenture, um, it take me years to get to, to, to double my income or to triple my income. And here you're talking like three to five years if you really hustle, basically. So that's like, that's a, that's really some things to think about in terms of getting into the mindset. And then it's saying you really have to master the skills. You have to be inviting, you have to be following up, you have to be promoting your events, you have to be presenting and you have to be closing. You can't just say, you know, you have a call with somebody and then you say, oh, hey, thanks for, that was great. Thanks for that. Um, we'll talk to you soon. You have to be like, well, what did you think was interesting about that? What was intriguing? What are your thoughts? Um, and then try and schedule follow-up calls. So that's kind of some of the things that we maybe already know, but it was just kind of good to hear that again from almost all of the leaders who presented to us. Um, and then defining your strategy, which I'll talk a little bit about in a second. And then he was saying, um, just always believe in yourself and believe in your prospects and just make sure that you're stronger in your own beliefs than your prospects might be in their beliefs because you're the you're kind of the the driver of the the ship or the captain of the ship and you just have to keep really believing in your vision and personal development and things like that really help um become skilled personal development is massive um you come with some skills you buy the rest i think we've all heard that before you use the books, you, there's so many free resources like TED Talks, um, all of the podcasts, like I listen to a ton of podcasts and they don't cost anything, just things like that that you can get your hands on really quickly. And then if you're a little introverted or you're, you don't like to be outside your comfort zone, then just act, like act like you are the CEO, act like the person that you want to be. And then eventually you will become that person. So there are some of the things that you should do and then some of the things you shouldn't do is get mad at your upline. Like you are the CEO of your business. And he said, you know, don't, don't ever be cross if you feel like you're not getting enough support, which is not the case, I think, in our team for me anyway. Um, you take ownership of your own journey. You take ownership of your, your kind of ship. It's your business. We are all CEOs. Like we are. We are. When we signed up, we become a CEO. Um, be resourceful, be resourceful, learn to solve problems, um, use the tools that you have and try not to let negative emotional experiences take over because that is so easy to do because we're all very um, emotional at heart, I think. Um, and then there was a, a piece on turning obstacles into opportunity and really like trying to focus on what you can do, what you can do with um, when something gets in your way and Eric Worry was talking about when he first started network marketing and his upline ended up leaving and he was kind of at crossroads like where, where does he go does he, he just drop he had a family to support you no know money and he ended up that was kind of the driver for him to book a hotel room for $200 which was his rent money invite like 80 people I think he said um, to come to the hotel room and then he said, he called all his family, called all his friends. He said, you have to come. You have to come just to help me. And I'm going to call you every single day until the meeting. So I'm going to make sure you come. 80 people did actually turn up and 18 of them signed up as part of his team. And so his empire grew. And so that was his obstacle. That was his opportunity. And like, look at him now. And he might, that might never have happened if his upline hadn't actually left. So it was quite a really cool story to hear. Um, from him and where that's his path has taken him now um, and then a quote two quotes actually what stands in your way becomes the way and great leaders spend five percent of time on the problem and 85 percent of the solution so these are things that we should be applying to our own businesses um, if there's an issue don't worry about the problem this applies to my day job as well um, just figure out what the solution can be so that was a little bit on the first topic. The second one, and I'm going to breeze through these really quickly. There's like so much more content, but um, we'll just kind of highlight some. And then if anyone wants more information, they can contact Emily or I afterwards. Um, 
the, the five four three two one approach. This was um, her name is Mel Robbins, and she is amazing. <laughs> she's she's an entrepreneur. She is she delivered one of the most popular TED talks ever um, on how to stop screwing yourself over. It's called. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll try and get the link and send it over. Yeah, she, yeah, she's just amazing. And um, for me and the couple of people I was here with, we were like, wow, this is so relevant for every single day life because, and I'll tell you what it is, but it's, it's just a really nice way of thinking about things. So the idea is that your mind can process a facial expression in 33 milliseconds. And if you have an impulse that's pulling you, if you don't marry that with an action within five seconds, your mind pulls the emergency brake and nothing happens. So there's some practical examples. Like I'm going to use my own personal example because I actually have tons when I think about this rule, but um, I did like a Tough Mudder a few, like a month ago or something. And one of the obstacles, one of the last obstacles was when you have to climb up onto this really high platform and you have to jump and there's water beneath you, you have to grab this like bar and then, but if you fall, you get, it's a really, it was a really high height and I'm scared of heights. And I got up to the top and I was like, oh yeah, I can totally do this. And then I had to wait for the person to tell me that I was allowed to jump. And then by the time he was like, oh, you can go. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm just because it was my head, my thoughts had been in the way, and I just really talked to myself about something that I'd I was gonna do, and so that was the one thing that I I didn't completely in a tough mudder, and I'm so angry with myself, but I'm gonna do it the next time, and it's the same for the business. You, if you're thinking about calling a prospect, five, four, three, two, one. By the time it's the one, the phone should be ringing. If you're thinking of contacting a person on Facebook, 54321, that email should be open. You should be writing the email. Do not overthink it because if you have the impulse and if you act on the impulse, it's going to be, it's action and it's great. And you just, we so often just let, we just let our heads like start to get in the way and, and then nothing happens. Um, so I love this. I just thought this is so amazing for so many things in my life I need to think about. <laughs> and another quote that goes along with this one, I think, is from, is from Tony Robbins. And it's, it, it's in the moment of the decision that destiny is created. And I love that because if you make the decision, but you have to take action on it. If you use the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, don't think about it. Just do it and then see what happens because what's the worst that happens? Someone, you know, someone says no or hangs up the phone or whatever, but we know that we're going to get no's and that's okay. The more no's we get, the more we're trying. So I love that. Even getting out of bed in the morning, don't snooze, five, four, three, two, one, jump up, go. <laughs> so that one was one of my favorites. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about really quickly is mastering the skills of life and fulfillment. And this is this is a little deeper. This was um, this was Tony Robbins. His session was actually he went over. It was supposed to be three hours, and it was four and a half hours, and which was brilliant because we loved him. Um, <laughs> and he was talking about mastering the science, and I think Emily's going to talk about some of his concepts as well in her in her bit. But um, mastering the science of achievement, modeling someone else is successful. We know that we. Um, like Megan and Carrie and lots of our uplines, like I'm always trying to see what you're doing and seeing how I can try and duplicate that in my business and then teach my downline to do the same thing. Um, always take massive action. If you have a massive vision, which hopefully everyone does have a massive vision, um, you have to take massive action because small action is not going to like match your massive action. And then be graceful. We Ha, we are so privileged to have amazing products that we get to work with and use. And I 150% believe in the products. I have no issue telling people about them because of what they've done for me in every single sense. I'll never try and steal someone else's customer. I'll never try and steal someone else's coaches. 
we we can just treat this business with grace and integrity and I think that's our team we're like that anyway and we just have to make sure that whenever we recruit people that they have the same kind of attitude um, he said that our fulfillment and this is really important to really have to understand what fulfills you and this was another emotional part of the session when he was talking about Robin Williams and how um, I don't know Robin Williams, it was really tragic, he committed suicide and Tony was saying how, you know, he's dealt with a lot of suicide cases, he's never lost anyone to suicide. Um, he didn't know that Robin Williams was suicidal and he said, you know, what if I had known, would something, could have helped him to understand what fulfills him and maybe that whole thing could have changed, maybe not, but maybe. And he was saying the point of bringing up Robin Williams was that he has everything to our, you know, from our perspective, he has everything. He has a beautiful family, has so many movies, has millions or billions of dollars and friends and everything. He never understood what fulfilled him. And it wasn't obviously money and it wasn't some of the other materialistic and non-materialistic things he had. And it just, the way he told the story just becomes so important to understand what it is that drives you and what fulfills you because, and you and your coaches, if you, and your customers, your customers, we have to treat them in the same way too. Like if people are driven by success, then we have to help them see success in other people. If they're driven by money, then that's fine. We have to help them understand um, how they can make more money if they're driven by um, our network. But whatever it is, we just have to understand that and help to build their business based upon that and make sure that they are, their needs are being fulfilled because it's a huge part of our business. Um, and then, yeah, you can just basically use that to, to work with your coaches and team members. So that was another thing that really resonated with me and understanding fulfillment. Um, the other one is vision and strategy. And if you have pen and paper, you might want to jot these things that um, Eric Worry, I think it was Eric Worry talked about. Um, number one is, and there's eight. Is there eight? Yeah, there's eight. Um, number one is decide. Decide that you are going to the meeting. Decide that you are going to contact five more people a day. Decide that you are going to um, spend 30 minutes at nine o'clock every night doing, or an hour or two hours. Just decide. And once you've decided, that's the foundation for your plan. Um, the second one is commit. So commit to learning and building the skills. You absolutely have to invest in yourself. And you have to you have to have the right skills. You might not have them all when you start, but you can build you can come with some, you can learn from your peers, you can learn from your team. And like I said earlier, you can buy the rest. You can buy books, you can buy training courses you can there's lots of different resources you can use but just commit to building the skills commit to practicing what you're not good at if you don't like speaking in front of people then you have to just get in front of people and talk to them and it's going to be super uncomfortable but then going back to the point I said earlier I'd like that person that you want to be and you become that person eventually and you really do like you really really do it's not like it does happen um, and then the third one is habits make a plan plan for every single day you have to take days off but you know during the week <laughs> um, develop business building habits and really focus on what are the activities that are helping to make you um, make your money like don't focus on you know busy work focus on activities that help to build your team help to develop your team members really focus on your downline making them successful as well um, the fourth one is association, and this is this was talked about so much during the conference. Was association with negative influencers and positive influencers, and we all have, them. <laughs> and we all have both of them. Um, you have to, you know, they were saying you have to surround yourself with five people. They're better than yourself, and then. Um, I forget Emily who was talking about that, but how you when you pick the five people. They're not going to want you because you're going to drop their standard. But if you can get into the circle of the five people, then eventually, like you, you're going to build yourself up. And that's um, just and the people that are the naysayers, just you don't have to completely eliminate them um, from your life. But maybe just reduce some of the time that you spend with them because if they're really negative, then it's going to bring down your business. Um, 
Number five is think bigger. 2017 for my business, especially after the conference, is seriously going to be massive, like massive. Um, think about what percent day this kind of activity. Um, and I know Emily and I were emailing about this yesterday. Uh, think about the percent that you're working at your business right now and think about what you want it to be. Where do you want to be by the end of March? Where do you want to be by the end of July or June, by the end of September, by the end of the year? And just increase your percentage accordingly. Like we're, you have to, like I said earlier, massive action. If you have a massive vision, you have to put in the massive action. Um, and then if you apply yourself, and we know this from Meg Carey, that it goes down, it has a much trickle effect because we see what our leaders are doing and we try and do the same thing ourselves. Number six is let it go. We are so good at holding on to past hearts and things that have really upset us and, and we have to just let it go. We have to just move on and say, you know what, tomorrow's a new day and get the personal development and surround yourself with those positive people, you know, talk to people that are like-minded and then and just move on. Um, number seven is vision. So create the vision for the future and align this with your objectives. Um, and then one of the really valuable points that they said was people buy the vision, not the products. And that's really true. And it's a little bit like our brand as well. People buy us for the brand that we create. Um, so really try and creating your vision for what the next year will look like. And then the game plan. You really have to have a game plan to actually action your vision and your um, your strategy. And it should be, you should have separate components of your vision. You should have a vision for growing your customer base. You should have a vision for your own personal development. You should have a vision for training your downline. Um, a vision for your team. You're going to have different components, but that will basically come together and become your, your kind of your game plan. And I have one more, but I think, Emily, do you want to, do you want to catch up? Because I think I've been talking for ages. You're fine. Keep, keep going. Do you, I mean, what, you have something else? I have one more. Just sure. one more. Okay. <laughs> I'll be really fast. Um, okay. So that really um, quickly, this is about getting outside of your head. Um, one of the things, Jane Leach is a network marketing seven figure earner. She, um, most of the people there were, to be honest. She's from the UK. She was very inspirational. She was talking about how to get your head and the things she was. Or four of the things we all feel with is our rejection. And we get that a lot. And we get that from our, um, our family and our friends. And that really hurts. But it's okay because it's not for everybody. The business isn't for everybody. And people don't get it. And then, but, you know, that's okay. Um, ridicule, same thing. It happens from often from our close community. Um, opinion. Everybody has an opinion about what we're doing. <laughs> And that's okay too, because honestly, you just focus on the positive ones. There's so many people that are like, oh, it's really amazing what you're doing, versus the people that are just nasting. And they're always going to be there. And they're always going to be there. If it's not us, it's somebody else. And then failure, you know, we're all afraid of failure. But if we don't fail, we're not trying. I think failure, failing forward, you know, we'll say is it's a really, really, really good thing. Um, and then... Just quickly, another presenter, Alan Pizel, um, he's another seven-figure earner. He was saying um, to kind of counteract those things, you associate with those who are where you want to be, which we talked about. Just try and navigate all the noise. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things that you can distract you. Digital distraction for me, because it's ridiculous. I get so caught up in what everyone is doing in social media. And then I have to just try and not stop scrolling. The scroll hole, I think someone called it, and one of the presenters, um, when you scroll all the time, uh, make success your mission, adopt an abundance mentality instead of a scarcity mentality, focus on personal development, believe, believe in yourself and believe in other people because that is everything. Don't, don't confuse disappointment with disaster because they're completely different things. We often get disappointed and it is not the end of the world. And then know when to draw the line sometimes we're not going to be able to make that sale and that's okay just move on to the next person there's always somebody else and we 
just have to expand our network and keep working in our vision and our brand. And that's it. <laughs> There's so much more. We have this, we have this book of um, just amazingness. It's like, and mine is like, it's packed full of notes. I went so through it this morning cool. and I like, like typed out a bunch of the most important stuff. Um, and yeah. Two hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically three days packed into this call. Yeah. It was so good, you guys. Um, yeah. you know, this just like reinforces when if you can get to events, you just should get to events. Like mm. there's something like this or, you know, beach body events, anything, just get there. Cause I am like so on fire right now and my heart is so lit up. And I think you can hear like in Shelly's voice, like how excited she is about everything. It just makes such a huge difference to be there and like in the room with that energy. It's, it's amazing. Um, so I, I'm really glad that Shelly, that you focus more on the, um, on like the technical and like log logistical stuff. Um, I'm a really strong pearl and with a strong secondary emerald. So um, I lead with my heart, but I think a lot of times I use my emeralds and my logistical side to like cover up and like protect myself from feeling all the really strong feelings that I feel. Does that make sense? Um, so I typically like Kimberly is here. We run our team together um, and, and we call ourselves glitter and glue. She's the glitter and I'm like the glue that holds everything together. Cause I'm the one who's like schedules and spreadsheets and everything. But, um, but this conference really reminded me that, that leading with my heart is, is so important and that to really like embrace the fear of that and like how hard that can be and how challenging that can be. Um, but how just incredibly vital and, um, how attractive that is, right? Like when you're leading with your real self, people are attracted to that and they feel that. So, um, so I'm going to share my, just a couple of takeaways. I kind of, um, actually drove home from Vegas. Um, it was like a four, four and a half hour drive right after the conference. So I left our, our evening closing ceremonies and I, I got on the road and I spent that entire like four hours um, processing and like thinking. And I want to share what I came up with with you guys. If that's cool. So I kind of like condensed everything down. Um, okay. So here are the things I have to write down and then I'm going to do, I'm a I, I used to be a teacher. So um, we're going to use multiple modalities to remember these things too. Cool. Awesome. So the first thing is practice gratitude. You, we have to be practicing gratitude. Every single person who got up on that stage, every single person that we talked to, the first thing they did was say thank you. That was the first thing every single person, every single speaker did is they said, thank you to Eric Worre and his wife. Like, thank you. Like everyone, thank you. And you feel in the room that the energy of that gratitude so important. And we have to wake up that day that way every single day. Um, and we really have to be celebrating our lives. I mean, it is, Gary Vee says this all the time too, but like, it is amazing that, that you, like, your collection of atoms is together on this earth. That's phenomenal, right? Like that, that deserves something that deserves gratitude. And that deserves our very best effort to take our little collection of atoms and be the very best collection of atoms that we can possibly be, right? <laughs> be grateful and celebrate that. Um, the next thing is be entitled. And this is huge for me because this is something that I have struggled with in the past. Um, you know, I've struggled to set big income goals for myself because I just have this, I just don't have that mentality. I didn't grow up um, in a family with entrepreneurs. I, I grew up with people who you know, got the job that they could get and accepted the paycheck that they got and never asked questions about it and never assumed that they were worth more. Um, so this idea of being entitled is, um, it's okay to want things. It's okay to want more. It's your birthright to want more than what you have right now. Um, and that can be very scary, right? Especially I think for women where we're kind of really expected to do the things that are expected and to not ask that many questions about it. So, um, you know, being entitled is really about giving your, yourself permission to want things, to want things that you don't have right now. Um, and the, the powerful way that that was explained um, that, that really stuck in me is that God would not plant a seed in your heart unless that seed was going to grow for you. Um, you would not be born with the desires that you have unless you were also born with the capability and the, um, what's sort of more, just the ability to achieve what you need to have those things like that, that want wouldn't even be in you if it was impossible because the universe would do that to you. Right. So if you want something, it's because 
you are completely capable and deserving and worthy of whatever that thing is. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be boats, it could be freedom, it could be traveling, it could be 18 kids, whatever. If you want it, it's because you're capable of getting it. Um, so that was huge for me. And um, the next one is, you know, uh, Shelly talked about this a lot too, be the CEO of your life. We have, we have exactly one life to live and none of us are getting out of this alive. So we have to live every single day as if it is our masterpiece. And know every minute that we spend, not putting value into the world is a minute that is wasted. And that's a minute that we're not paying our rent that we get, that we, that we owe, like the success that we owe to the world being here. Um, every minute of waste, we're not paying that rent, which then means that we're not going to get that value back. So be the CEO of your life of every day is, if it is really, really important because it is really important. Important and every day is a huge opportunity. Um, and also, like, don't let other people control that. That's a big part of that, too. Don't, don't keep telling yourself the story that other people are in charge of you. Other people are not in charge of you. They're not in charge of your time. They're not in charge of your emotions. They're not in charge of what you do. You are in control of that. You. And you're the only one who's in control of those things. So take control. Be intentional. You decide what happens in your life. Next one is building your legacy. Um, and Shelly talked about this too. So many of the incredibly successful people from they are giving back. Every single person up there is like, oh, you know, I make this money and I give, you know, bajillions of dollars to this charity that's really important to me. And I'm giving back to my community. Um, so not only am I changing lives in my business by helping people to find financial freedom, um, no one knows about what what a specific like um, industry they were in but for us it would be yeah I'm, I'm building my legacy by helping people to fall in love with themselves be healthier and happier and lead a more fulfilling life I'm also building my legacy by helping people build businesses and find financial freedom and I will also be building my like legacy to fund schools in countries and communities that need schools um, by raising children who are healthy and beautiful um, by by enjoy Right into the lives of everyone that I touch, that's my legacy, right? So really own that and know what you want to give to other people and to the world. Um, the next one is live with integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. Keep the promises that you make to yourself. Um, and I think Richard Branson said this really nicely. He said, don't do anything that's going to damage your brand. And for me as a coach, one thing that I have struggled with in the past that I've decided I'm not going to struggle with anymore um, is eating well. Um, I have in the past been an overeater and a binge eater, um, and that is difficult or has been difficult to deal with. Um, but now, like, what I'm trying to do is so important that if I do that now, I'm damaging my brand. I'm damaging what I'm what I'm trying to give to the world, right? I'm damaging the story that I'm telling. Um, so everything that we do is either helping us or hurting us. So live with integrity and do the things that help you more than you do the things that hurt you. Um, the next one, Shelly said this too, let go of the naysayers and skeptics, let go of your old stories, and let go of all of those excuses. Everything that you say, I want to build a business, but I want to eat better, but I want to work out, but just let go of all of those and tell yourself a new story. Right. Um, you know, the story, like I talk, I, I do this with my clients a lot. Every time I hear them say something like, um, uh, like, Oh, I just couldn't find, find time to work out today. Okay. So that's a story that you just told yourself. That's not a truth. So how can we rewrite that story for tomorrow? Right. How, what, what can we say that's going to give you ownership over that and create truth in your life instead of continuing to like carry all of the old baggage that you've got. I can talk about that more. I could go on about that for hours. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, honor your own strength. And those are kind of my own words, but a lot of people talked about living authentically, sharing your gifts, um, being really clear with yourself about what your strengths are, um, and, and knowing, knowing what value you have. It's another thing Richard Branson talked about. He was like, you should only be doing something better than everyone else out there. And the only thing that we can be better at is being ourselves. So you have to honor that. You have to know who you are, know what your strengths are, and be ready to hear that and, um, and own that and recognize that and really be proud of that and of who you are and all of your complexity. Cool?
Okay, can we do an activity, you guys? Because <laughs> So I used to be a teacher. So we're gonna do a physical modality to help ourselves remember this. This is, again, like I was driving home, it was like two o'clock in the morning, and I came up with this. So it's okay if it's ridiculous. We're gonna do it anyway. So hold your hands up for me. Just shake out your hands a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna practice gratitude. So go ahead and give yourself a high five. Self, you got up this morning, you got out of bed this morning, you did something today, right? You guys, seriously, when I started my beach body journey, I had gotten to the point in my life where I was not getting out of bed most days. I don't know if anyone has ever been there before, um, but I would like get up and pee and I would get back into bed. And my husband would come home from work and I would either say, oh, I'm, I'm just taking a nap, or I would like get up and throw on jeans and pretend like I'd been up all day. Like that's where I was. Okay. So for me, like I freaking got out of bed this morning. Like that's amazing. That's a huge accomplishment already. Right. So celebrate that. Um, the next one, go ahead and give yourself a, high, a, a thumbs up. Okay. You can say to yourself, um, I am good. I am worthy. I am deserving. Um, I am awesome. I'm unique. I'm valuable. I'm the only person who can be me. Yes. Hold up your point of finger. <laughs> We're just going to move on down our hand. Point of finger. I have one life to live. Point it at yourself, and I am the only person who can live this life. Okay? Hold up your pinky finger. This is building your legacy. This is the pinky promises that you make with everyone else in your life. You've got to keep those promises. Pinky promises are sacred. Anyone else do pinky promises all the time? I do them, and I never break them. So pinky promise. Hold up your ring finger. This is the vow that you make to yourself. Your commitments and your self-promises are sacred. You do not break them. This is living with integrity, okay? If you have kids in the room, you might want to skip this next one, but if you don't, go ahead and say this to all of your excuses and your stories and all of the people who've told you you can't do this, okay? Finally, give me a fist really strong, and I want you to say this after me. Say, I am strong, I am capable, and I got this. That's it. That's what I got for you today. <laughs> Do this when you wake up. I, I did it when I woke up this morning and I felt amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to start my day like that every day. That was totally fun. I liked that ending. And I was wondering if you guys have any of your notes like down, I know it will be gibberish for people that weren't on the call, but if you have stuff that you can like just compile quickly or easy access, um, if you could put it in the thread with our call, call post, that would be great. Um, Cause I know that I was, I was looking and I don't know if I got number eight from Shelly, but I'm sure I can just check. Um, and I was getting a bunch of notes, but that was awesome. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Are there questions? And thank you so much for, for having us. I'm really grateful to be able to share. I mean, we, it was such an incredible experience. And Shelly, I know that you, you know this too, but so much of it was about growing ourselves so that we can give more um, and doing calls like this and being able to share what we learned is just a part of that part of being able to share and give back yeah that if was anyone awesome. has questions for me and Shelly I don't I'm, I'm kind of blown away like I felt like I was there but I wasn't <laughs> no. we should all go next year because it's just no. it's so amazing and you're not allowed to talk about which company that you're with. So it's just very oh, generic. And yeah. you're not allowed, so no one's allowed to prospect. So they set all these really, really strict rules at the start. You're not allowed to bring out she calls you bottle. You're not allowed to wear anything that shows what brand you are. But the beauty is there's 20,000 people all trying to just make this industry freaking amazing mm -hmm. and helping each other. And yeah. there's not competition. It's just like, I just like really that. authentic development yeah and the and eric worries like if you try and prospect anyone you're literally you're out yeah and it's fair enough yeah so, although I if really you get kicked out in vegas that's not such a bad deal <laughs> i know it's like don't but get anyone distracted by the strip <laughs> then you would have missed the amazing stuff we got and like the value that's true that's true yeah I, can. Um, I really want to go, if anyone is interested in going to the women's conference in oh, I want to go. March, I really want to go. The women's panel was, was the Amazing. thing that was the most. It was incredible. Was what, it? Um, what part of March? <laughs> it's like the beginning. It's March like 2nd through the 4th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, post it, info on the pay on our team. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. And it's in Vegas again. So. Emily, did you guys get a promo code for that? Uh, no, we didn't. Oh, we didn't? We no, there wasn't really one. 
But if you buy like a five pack, it's cheaper. If you buy a 10 pack or a hundred pack, it's cheaper. Right. But it's like, it's 400 bucks to go just for the regular price ticket, which I think is already a great value for what I got out of it. And what I'm yeah. going to the cash, I'm going to be able to turn this into. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does it bring it down to for 10 people? Um, 10, five people is 1800. There's no 10 people. 20 is 6,000. Oh, the women's conference? That brings it down to 300 a person. I this mean, is the women's. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, it's just, I think it's amazing. The, they really were, they were so incredible. Their content and their delight, they were just very inspirational and lots of really good points mm -hmm. and how we can help to grow our business. But yeah, I think if you buy 100, it's 25,000. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really cool yeah, to hear okay. from these women who, like, um, I, I went and I followed some of them, so I now I know what business they're in, but, like, um, Gloria Mayfield Banks is in Mary Kay, and she's been doing Mary Kay for, like, 35, 40 years. Oh. So incredible, and it's just, it's just really, really inspiring to hear from people who've been doing this business full out for so long and to see what's really possible. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, and they have, they've been doing their PD every single day and they are just these radiant presence and like such strong belief in what, in who they are and in what they're doing. It's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I was sitting there listening to you guys and just being like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Gosh. But Thank you guys for being on and um, thank you for offering yourselves for questions if people have them. Um, that's really appreciated. And um, thank you for joining us You're and welcome. leading this. Cool. You're most welcome. <laughs> With the high five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Good night, you guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.